Hello and what's going on everybody? My name is Mike Hanna, ham radio call sign Whiskey 9 X-Ray Alpha X-Ray. Sorry, I don't like my call sign. It's a vanity. Anyway, I had posted a video about my portable operations antenna on Facebook here a while back. And a lot of people have questioned me, sent me messages about it, how it was built, what components went into it. So I'm going to play that video for you now. Well, I had some people messaging me, about a handful, about <laughs> this slinky antenna. So I figured I'd make a little video and just show it to you. Instead of parking the car on it, I just got a heavy, solid brick. And it's basically just a little uh, one by six, I think, board with another one, PVC pipe, a couple brackets to hold it in place. This is a 20 foot crappie fishing pole. It's just slid down in there with the slinky attached. Up at the top, it just slides out. I've got a little key ring that slides through it and at the bottom it connects on here that goes down to my 9 to 1 on on and basically you just expand the pole I'll set you down and show you okay I had to change locations because of technical difficulties we'll go with that anyway okay here's it going up anyway That's all there is to it. it. Goes up really easy. And here's it going back down. Quick enough, right? Thanks. Okay, everybody, that was the video that I posted on Facebook here a while back. And that is basically the antenna in a nutshell. But for me, the antenna is just a little bit too big. It's too long and wide to fit my Chevy Cobalt, which is my everyday driver, to go out and do portable ops with, parks on the air, whatever I feel like doing. But it it's kind of big to fit in the trunk, so I decided to make some mechanical changes to it so that I could fit it in the trunk of the car and not have to struggle to get it all in there. So I'm going to show you the parts that I'm going to make it out of. It's just a few cheap parts, but I will show you the parts, how I put it together and how it works for me and maybe go into a little bit more detail about it. But uh, here we go. Okay, here are the parts all laid out that I'm going to use to put this together with. They should look familiar from the video that I inserted a while ago. Anyway, this is the 20 foot long crappie fishing pole with uh, just a little key ring on the end of it. A inch and a half, maybe oh, two foot long piece of PVC pipe and just two little one by boards that will eventually go this way together. The hardware I got over here to, uh, I don't even know what these are called, but they are supports for the pipe to hold on to the wood, and these are new. These are going to be what holds it together with the hinge that I put on it so I can fold the thing in half. So let me get you set up here, and we'll put this thing together. All right, guys, I have got the hinge on, and all that I have done so far is hinged this piece so that the vertical piece will hinge down and lay down on the horizontal piece. So now I'm going to mount the pipe on the outside here. That way it will all stand up like this whenever I'm finished. So let's get to it.
Okay, I have got the pipe mounted, the inch and a half PVC pipe I have got mounted on the outside. And you can see that it now pivots up to where it will be vertical once again. And you still have plenty of room on this board to park your vehicle on, put a brick on, sandbag, whatever it's, whatever it's going to be. Uh, I do plan on changing all this wood out with some vinyl wood looking esque type stuff that I have that way I don't have to worry about it rotting 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 or anything else this is just a proof of concept once I get it to work and see that it works out in the field I will go ahead and change it over to the vinyl but the vinyl is a little more expensive and I don't have a whole lot of it so I'm gonna try it out with this see how I like it see if I need to make any changes and then I will change it out at that point now that I've got it hinged and the pipe mounted I am going to use these guys here and I'm going to mount these in here and these little eyelets down in here. That way, whenever I stand it up vertically, I can hook the hook into the eye holes down here and keep it vertical. So let's go. Alright guys, we have now placed the hooks in place on both sides and we have the eyelets on the horizontal board down here at the bottom. Now with the hinge that we installed earlier, we can just lay this guy up and if I can do this with one hand, we can put the hooks in to place which are going to hold the vertical board vertical. So now the vertical board cannot collapse back in on itself until we undo these hooks. So the whole thing is going to be fairly secure and able to support the antenna. So let's go ahead and throw on everything else that we need for the antenna. Okay, we have uh, installed this. I'm not sure what it's called. It's a little nub that is wood threaded on this side, which runs down in the wood and holds it secure. Little nut shaped thing, and it is bolt threaded on this side. We'll run a wire from the 9 to 1 un un, which will be hanging off this, just a little eyelet and one of these thingamabobs. The 9 to 1 will hang off that and a wire will run from the antenna side of the 9 to 1 up to this nub and the slinky will connect with a uh, ring terminal and go up the pole. But anyway, let's get this 9 to 1. I've got a little hook on it. Which, if I can get it in the right direction which will slide onto here and hold it in place. It's not the most secure. I'll probably replace this thing with something more sophisticated at some point, but right now this is kind of a proof of concept of the mechanical features of the antenna, so I'm not too worried about that. And that's it for the 9 to 1, the SO239, the counterpoise side, and this side is for the antenna, which we will connect up here to this nub, which will run on the slinky up the length of the fishing pole. So let me go grab a few more things, and I'll be right back. All right, I've got the end of the slinky ran through the key ring, which is ran through the eyelid 
idle it, eye hole, whatever it's called, of the end of the fishing pole. This is how it's secured whenever it gets raised up. And the slinky runs down the pole and is connected to this nub here with just a ring terminal. And it is connected to the 9 to 1 with this 14 gauge wire. It's just got a little fork wire terminal connector on the end of it. If I can get it to focus. Thanks, Samsung. There you go. And this side here is for a counterpoise. The counterpoise length was a lot more important whenever I was using the internal tuner on my Icom 7300. But with the after I got the LDG IT100 auto tuner, it's not as important for the length. I'm sure it works better if the length is correct, but I put a 25 foot counterpoise on it and just leave it alone. That LDG IT100 auto tuner seems to be able to tune up 80 all the way down to uh, five meters with it. So it's about the gist of it. I'm assuming I'm going to be a lot happier with the antenna now that I can just unhook these and lay the antenna down it should be a lot more portable easier to get in and out of the car and i do believe that i'm going to be a lot happier with that all right guys that's it for today i uh, hope you enjoyed the video if you did comment subscribe hit the like button all that happy youtube stuff uh I know that this antenna is a compromised antenna. It's not meant to work as well as what a half wavelength dipole, half a wavelength in the air is going to. But as far as getting out of the house, not having to pack a whole lot of stuff with me, easy setup, easy takedown, it's a very good antenna for that. I love using it for parks on the air activations. And this antenna, I'm probably going to continue to change on it, upgrade it. Uh, you know whatever it it's fun to play with so anyway let me know what you think about it until next time see ya